We are moving into the next phase of our programming, which really dives deep into the metaverse. Uh, we're starting off with a session here. I, if anyone has had a chance to check out the metaverse experience in the back corner, check it out after this. Um, but we're going to get a tour through it with Renee Schmidt, CTO of the Museum of Crypto Art, along with Jonathan Palmer here, who's going to show us what you can see over there yourselves. And uh, turn it over to you, Jonathan. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Jonathan Palmer, and I'm the creative director of The Peregrine. We create experiences both in real life as well as metaverse things like this that blend that reality. Um, today, what I want to start out with, there's a saying in uh, Web3 that it's early. And as the Web3 community converges with the video game industry and some of these entertainment platforms, that's also true. So bear that in mind today as we try to give you a tour uh, that this tech is still pretty early. and so. Uh, will hopefully get a live demo off uh, with no hitches. So um, the big thing here is that we want to show you one of the basic principles of the open metaverse, the concept of interoperability. And uh, joining me today is, is uh, Renee Schmidt, who's from the Museum of Crypto Art. Renee, how are you doing today? You know, hey, Jonathan. Hey, Austin. Um, I'm doing good. Um, I'm standing in Germany, but it's great to be on stage with you in, in, in Texas, you know? <laughs> That's one of the real um, beauties of this, is that we have this ability to connect outside of, of physical geography in ways that are so similar to our real life experiences. Um, start us off a little bit with uh, the environment that you're in here. As we talk about interoperability, there's different things that people may not understand. Right now, you and I are both in VR, uh, virtual reality headsets, but take us through a little bit of the process of building an environment like this and how interoperability plays a role in experience. Yeah, of course. So I'm standing inside um, a virtual world called NEOS. It's um, a desktop-based high-end um, application where you can build worlds within VR. So everything around me has been constructed um, with my own hands in VR. So I can in, like, load models into this. And uh, we have like this flagship product at Mocha, which is called Mocha Rooms. And behind me, you can see um, one of these structures, which we are going into detail later. But yeah, like this is ultra high end, uh, full body tracking. Uh, Everything is mapped, and um, yeah, where, where are you, Jonathan? I cannot see you. <laughs> okay. I lost your video as well, too. Do we have video on Renee, anybody? <laughs> One of the interesting things about this is when you're inside the VR headset and cobbling together this, you can't see a lot of things that are happening in the real world as well as the virtual world in other realms. So one second here. You We're going to take a... There we go. Now we got you. Now we got a visual on you. Awesome. So I, what I was saying is like I'm in Neos and I got like full body tracking here, like everything uh, ultra high end with like an 11 point tracking system that I'm wearing. Um, so that's the upper end of, of the technology stack that's possible in, with consumer hardware today. Yeah. And so one of the interesting things about interoperability is the fact that we have one model that's designed in a modeling application and then has different, uh, the ability to port that into different environments with different constraints. So the one that you're in right now is a really high resolution, uh, high end VR experience. But let's go ahead and switch over to, uh, to that same exhibit inside of uh, Decentraland, which is basically a lower fidelity, more, uh, it's a browser based uh, experience that takes that and translates that into a browser. So if we could switch over to the browser, uh, my browser right now, we'll kind of see that experience. I'm going to like show you this from... From here. Can people see like both of our feet at the same time? Let's see here. Do we have do we have a one second here? We'll get the uh, the image up for Decentraland. 
So maybe while we're waiting here, Renee, can you explain to us the process as you, you build a model in a modeling application, and then what's the process to then take that and begin those steps of interoperability depending on where it is that you want to take that and, and uh, deploy it? Yeah, so, so this object has been created by our architect um, Untitled XYZ inside Blender, and um, you can like insert this um, in, in like a GRB format into this world, and then like decorate it with art, which is exactly the same process that um, has been done for like the Decentraland scene that Jonathan is going to show you. But the interesting thing that we are working on here with Mocha Rooms, which is like, this is uh, Mocha Room, by the way. So that's a 16 slot Mocha Room that can carry 16 art pieces. And we are going to automate this further so that people can basically drag and drop like pre-configured 3D architectural structures into their virtual world and then update the art on the wall inside the web 3 dub inside the museum, inside Mocha. And then um, like these updates are then reflected across like the different instances across the metaverse inside different worlds. So you maintain like an art exhibition in a single place and then um, can have like 100 instances across like 30 different virtual worlds. Like that's the goal that we are having with Mocha Rooms. That's, that's an incredible step towards interoperability uh, with Mocha Rooms. That's a great feature you guys are building at the Museum of Crypto Art. Um, so if we want to look over here, basically we have the same exact thing in Decentraland, and you can see that uh, um, the fidelity is a little bit less, it's a different experience, but it's an interpretation of the same data, and it's creating a different experience that's accessible. One of the big pieces here is if you have to have uh, if you have to have a VR headset in order to experience this, there's a barrier that prevents a lot of people from that. And so by installing things in web-based, uh, uh, browser-based experiences, the accessibility opens wide open to a lot more people. And so you're able to reach a different audience with those mediums. Um, really quickly here, so this is the Moco. Basically, the install that we built out here in Decentraland for the Filecoin community is basically one of these. And so I'm going to go ahead and navigate down there, and we'll do uh, a little bit of a segment there uh, to showcase that space that we have built. If you're here in Austin, Texas, you can go actually, there's a video game control system that we've built in the NFT gallery that you can actually play this with a controller on a 10-foot LED wall. And if you're uh, online, you can obviously go and visit Decentraland in your browser to see the space. So um, why don't you go ahead and riff here just for a second, uh, Renee, while I track myself down to the to the Filecoin build? Uh, I can like switch into, fi into the Filecoin build as well. Give me a second. There we go. Uh, I'm already waiting for you there. So this is a little bit of a real-time demo. This is basically how long it takes to load up the different scenes. Um, but you can see over here on Renee's screen, he's got his browser already loaded up. And that is the, uh, the, final, the file coin build in Decentraland. Um, if you want to go ahead and run around the other side there, Renee, we can go full screen on Renee too if you want. All right. So basically, one of the... One of the big things here is that this world, these worlds that we're creating that are decentralized, uh, that are interoperable, like all of these components, there's one basic thing that's really important for all of this, and is that that's a robust uh, base layer for data. And that's obviously, we're all here for Filecoin. And so that's one of the real incredible opportunities with these virtual spaces and some of the experiences that are getting created here. We have a lot of stuff with Filecoin. It's like, you know, insert data here. What that data actually is is one thing that I think we kind of gloss over a lot. But that's, these are really incredible, uh, that data represents incredible things like photographs and experiences, metaverse architecture like this that creates connection between humans. And I think that's one of the most important things that we uh, kind of gloss over is the humanness of what that data represents. Uh, one quick thing, so here we're outside. I'm going to go ahead and run inside so you guys can kind of get a quick glimpse of this. What we've done here is we've got a community space that people, no matter where you are in the world, you can come and turn on your mic and start engaging with different people and running around and exploring. 
We have a couple of fun things here. We have a quick little challenge. We've got these little uh, files that are glowing, and you can run around and collect those files. And if you take all of that after, uh, after that up to the top deck of, of this installation, you can get QR code pops up, and you can redeem an NFT for a, a Filecoin wearable, which is uh, kind of a fun way, and you can get that airdrop to you. So we've got a little elevator here to get up to some of the other levels. Let's go up to the third floor. Check out the live stream happening in the background there. So it creates a, like a watch party environment where people can run around and do different things uh, and talk amongst themselves while the events are going on. So it's really designed to be a community space uh, that people from throughout the world can gather in real time and have real deep, intimate human connections. I think that's, that's, again, one of those things that, again, the technology is quite early, but the fundamental thing that humans want to do is connect with each other, whether that's through things like chat, you know, very early chat rooms and stuff like that, uh, very low fidelity interfaces, but people are definitely making meaningful relationships. And I think that's one of the things that will come out of uh, these metaverses is that we're really focusing on, on real human connection, real human needs that are being facilitated in this way. Uh, Renee, are you, you want to come up to the third floor to the Mocha Rooms exhibit? Yeah, I'm standing next to you. Oh, are you? Um. <laughs> there he goes, okay. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> we've got some pretty exciting stuff. Like Mocha's been building on IPFS, and uh, there's some interesting things that are happening uh, with the advent of uh, where you guys are going with the Museum of Crypto Art. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that you guys are working on. Yeah, like the Mocha Rooms um, product is what I've already like teased before, like interoperable 3D architecture. Um, we have like announced our fork that emits one NFT via auction every day. So this is a fair launch and not like a 10K drop um, that people are used to these days. Um, like, but this builds on top of like the existing um, ecosystem that we already have. We have like the multipass, which is your profile page, like MySpace, but with NFTs you can organize all your stuff and write your own narratives by uh, categorizing them and then you can share them and stuff. And then we have like a multiplayer exhibition lab that allows you to um, curate with your friends um, NFT exhibitions uh, for real life and virtual world um, display um, inside the Mocha Dub and like everybody can use the stuff that they have activated in, inside their Mocha Multipass. And then this flagship product Mocha Rooms is about like bridging all of this into the metaverse into three-dimensional space via unique architecture. And um, obviously like the next step for us is ensuring that the, the NFTs that are meaningful to all of the users that are bringing them in every day into the museum and that these are like backed up appropriately. And um, this is why we have been reaching out to the Falcon team. And um, yeah, like, it, is, it is very, very cool. Like we are exploring like a partnership to offer archival solutions for the world's most important NFTs, which is basically what the users of Mocha define for themselves as important. So all of this should be updated, should, should be like backed up appropriately inside the Filecoin ecosystem. Yeah, definitely that long-term preservation that's guaranteed and archival on Filecoin is one of those pieces that when we look at these NFTs and the significance, you know, art, art is something that, uh, that is, is really, really important for humanity. And uh, it's really exciting to hear about the partnership between Filecoin and the Museum of Crypto Art to make sure that the assets and the NFTs that you guys are, are, uh, are curating are backed up and archived uh, indefinitely. Yeah, like it's, it's multi-chain. Um, so you can like activate, the system is built in the design that we will be able to aggregate like NFTs from multiple blockchains into this. We already have like three supported blockchains right now. We have Ethereum, Polygon, and the um, Gnosis chain to aggregate co-ops. And um, there will be a lot more. And um, so it's, it's blockchain agnostic, um, which is super important. Yes, definitely, all great stuff. Fantastic, that's really exciting. I think we got about uh, one minute left on our session. 
I would love to go ahead and give you guys a little bit of a sneak preview of uh, this build here real quick. This, uh, this was a project that was done in collaboration with IRL Art. And uh, Yule and Annie, who are, are brilliant at blending metaverse stuff, building, uh, their teams have built this entire architecture and deployed this. Uh, lots of this stuff that seems really, really simple is really, really complex and difficult at this stage in the game. And so uh, their coding teams, Godfrey, uh, Boombox Head, definitely want to call you out as well, too, for uh, definitely contributing some amazing stuff uh, to this build. So everybody who's uh, either in the room, go play the installation in the NFT gallery. And if you're online, jump into the Decentraland space and make a new friend. So thank you very much.